Hey everyone, welcome to the B-Side Word. We are a group of friends from around the world. I am Alex and I'm here today with Maxi. Hello. Dev. Hello. Emma. Hello. And we're going to discuss some second page news. What are we starting with, Emma? Okay, so let's start with your article first, Alexander. Article? Tweet. <laughs> you know me and my tweets. <laughs> um, so my tweet today, actually, it's, this, is, this isn't even a tweet. It's an Instagram post. Um, it's a IGTV story slash post. But basically what it is, is, is talking about what's going to happen on Instagram. Um, so if you look at the premise of Instagram, what a lot of people are doing is marketing through there by using what we all know as influencers. Instagram are saying because of the health and well-being stuff that we kind of touched on, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now, mm-hmm. uh, that it can be a bit detriment- detrimental. So they're testing something in Canada where they're removing likes ah. on posts. So you won't be able to see likes and views. I did hear about that. And you can see they've already minimized. I don't know if you if it's been updated where you guys are, but they've minimized uh, followers on your page. So it's like not big at the top. It's small at the bottom. Oh. Your bio and stuff. oh, in the bio. So like, really? Should we check this? So yeah, yeah if you have a look. Some of my I don't accounts know. have changed and others Let's haven't. Have a look. I don't yeah, have a lot of followers mine, though. Some of mine had, but now all this week, my oldest account has now changed to that. So all of my accounts look like that. So now. what does it look like? Can, oh. Do you do you have... Uh, I don't get uh, it. Uh, mine's still the same, I think. I'll, s- I'll send a screenshot of, some, of an account I took yesterday. Maybe if you um, don't have many uh, followers like us, it's yeah. just the same. <laughs> it's like you're or not. Or you've only got one no, account. You're my, not on here enough. My account, <laughs> my account with the most followers was the last one to change. Oh, okay. Oh, whilst we're on Instagram, <laughs> our little Instagram B side word has had seventy six visits in the last seven days. Thank you very much, listeners. We will try to continue to put content on there. What kind of content? Don't know. Whatever you guys come up with. No, you're supposed to say quality content. <laughs> quality. You're supposed to say quality content. That's what content quality. So That's some high quality <laughs> HDR. High quality. <laughs> <laughs> so this what what I thought was really interesting about this, I mean you can talk about a lot of different things and I'm open to that. I Wait, can I can I pause thoughts. you for a sec? Can I put po- why are you following yeah. Rustic Art Studio with nails? What do you mean? Rustic Art Studio might be good. Who are they? Oh, no, sorry. I paused. Pause. I thought it was nail art. No, continue. <laughs> it's, no, that's, that's, a, that's a friend of mine okay. who's just set up her art account. So go oh. follow the Rustic Art Studio. I was um, thinking it was like actual rusty nails. Like, and I she thought makes it was rusty art nails. with them. That's, that's what I thought. Anyways, continue. Oh, when Alex. you said that, I thought you meant <laughs> fingernails. Back to the article. Back to the article. To the article. Uh... <laughs> so, okay. By the way, I'm just letting you know, I've just started the timer. My bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so in this, in, in this, I guess, change they're doing, they're rolling it out through Canada as a test. I'm not sure how much through Canada, if it's just a localized area or whatever, but they're doing it to see how it works. But my intrigue about it is touching on those influences, the marketing, like the way the platform is designed is a lot of people post for algorithms. They don't post because that's what they want to like it's not i just want people to see this it's how can i get the most engagement right so when you remove the engagement from it how does that affect businesses from a marketing standpoint how does that affect influencers all that kind of like that's where my mind sort of went okay so how is it is it going to be that we can't see the likes but we can still like on it are we is it yeah so you'll still be able to double tap and all that but you just won't see the numbers we'll still be able to see the like like if so, yeah. I'll be able to see the likes on my own one. I believe I. I don't know if you'll be able to see like the number, or if you'll just get the notifications like you do now, and then you'd have to sit there and count. All right, that's one, two, three. Well, they're, they're, <laughs> that case, I don't get it. So hang on, why are they doing this? We'll do the is this for you? Isn't there? Yeah. Depending on how much they're locked down. I, if this is something, I guess they want to. You know how Instagram used to be, where they're they're pretty locked down and. <clears throat> sorry excuse me they were pretty locked down in the in their um d- their programming so like a lot of third-party apps couldn't interact with them historically yeah um i don't know if if this is something they really want like do they want to get rid of influencers like i don't know i'm confused if you think about the move it's pretty aggressive against influencers 
but 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 the whole like the whole movement they've had recently has been for influencers like the way they've gone away from the feed is no longer time based it's like the algorithm chooses who's at the top of your feed and um a lot of stuff is um they're trying to push people towards paid if they want to grow like you have to pay kind of thing they're pushing it in a oh. way which influences it's harder to grow organically on instagram than it used to be huh. see i find that interesting because in f- if you look i remember when they did the non-chronological feed um mm. there were a lot of complaints because influencers in particular got less they their likes and stuff dropped because not as many people were seeing their stuff why because i'm so confused this because whole it wasn't a thing. case of before if you posted a picture at 10 a.m everyone who yeah. was on would see it but whereas now you can post a picture like, yeah. and it and it will you and it doesn't go up like, but what what it, that yeah, what that people meant is the people now that get to the top yeah the people that get to the top now are the people that play the system and the people that play the system tend to be the ones that are like invested in instagram but it's not so, it's really? not just play this it's not just play the system like for example i follow a myriad of different stuff so like i follow people for fitness i follow people for art i follow people for traveling all that kind of stuff um mm. so if i go and like a few art pictures now i don't see the fitness content anymore so they yeah. they can have really high engagement it doesn't matter i'm not going to see it because i haven't liked that recently well, I'm so, yeah, so they lose I'm out confused. from that perspective yeah, i don't know I, I think it's all about the algorithm they're talking about the algorithm of instagram and yeah. how it changes and the People so that are influencers, like they... Really in- yep. Oh, go on. I was going to say, on the algorithm, there's a really interesting um, video I saw about on Facebook. Um, you could like right-click on it and get the source information for the picture, and then somehow it shows you what the Facebook algorithm kind of reads from that picture using AI. Okay. So it would say, like, um, this picture has somebody smiling, they're wearing a hat, it's sunny, they got a suit on. This was a picture of somebody's graduation, for, by the way. Um there's more than one person in there and then because all of those things if you go back to their sort of algorithm that's like always matches graduation day photos and those are the kind of photos which get a lot of likes because if you graduate you tend to get a lot of likes so then this person was like okay i'm going to now start posting pictures because it doesn't know it's a graduation photo it just has all this random information yeah and then the algorithm adds it up to say this is a successful photo normally so he's saying i'm going to put a picture of me smiling tends to work better Wearing hats often works better. Uh, having a suit on, like just really weird niche things like this, which the algorithm. This isn't like, I know Alex probably jump in and confirm this, but this isn't like the be all and end all. But it does have an effect on how well your post gets pushed. Right. By I'm so, this is so like, new to the, me yeah. or news to me because I just but thought the, um, you post and yeah. then that's it. Like okay. people like the whole yeah, it just goes in chronological order. So when did that change? Oh, a while back now. So, like, are you yeah. saying, like, some people post and there's just never, ever, ever is, like, on the feed? Well, okay, I'll tell you what. Next time you... I don't know if you post regularly on Instagram. You don't, no. really. But next time you do, yeah. have a look at your feed. Because, like, when I post on my feed, my post isn't at the top. Like, it goes, like, 10 posts deep. Like, yeah. so the well, algorithm mine does, says yeah. m- mine's not even as imp- that important to me. <laughs> like, do, you never like, do you ever like your own stuff? Yeah, you Maybe don't you like, like yeah, your own stuff. It will stay up there. Huh. Actually, that's so weird because I was looking through and I kept getting this. I think it's through our B side word page. I kept getting this. Um, yeah. draw me a picture. Did you see that? The hand. But every single one in the feed was draw me a picture. Draw, I'm like thinking, why is there all these? Are you talking about pic- the one that draw the hand the hand drawing? Yes, the hand drawings. Have you seen that hand drawing? That was like it went viral. No, he just. People send in anything saying, draw me a picture of, and it could be something random and no, someone will hand draw it. that's not what I'm talking about. Yes, and he hand draws it. That's what Emma's talking about. Oh, no. Uh, do you know what I'm <laughs> talking about, Maxi? I know what Emma's talking about. I don't know what you're talking so about. So there's this four, like, there's this, the way that this person drew a hand was, like, so easy, right, that everyone thinks that they can copy it. So they, uh, essentially, there's this small circle at top, and he draws uh, four of them. Right, so that and he draws another circle and he draws it down. So there's this he he duplicates it. No, duplicates. He, he draws it four times, and all of a sudden he draws a few more lines, and it turns out to be like this perfect female hand. What? Now all these people, like Ellen, uh, Jason, PJ, they all tried it. They looked at the video and then they mimicked it, and it turned out yeah. to be ogre hands. And some <laughs> ended up being just like this massive. Um, 
just lines put together and they're like, how did he do it? Like, honestly, if you watch his video, it's so simple. But to copy it, it's like, it's impossible. Uh, it's All not right. impossible. Oh, it's just, I need to see it's, this. This sounds so fascinating. I want to draw this hand. <laughs> Ellen drew we it. We should all draw our version of the hand like, and put it up. This hand is like, honestly, like the, the picture is slender fingers. And Ellen drew it like it's these fat, chunky sumo <laughs> fingers. It just, <laughs> it was. That's not what hey, I was Emma, talking about. Yes. If you want to see the, the feed thing in action, a really quick way to do it is follow someone. When you follow someone, you'll notice a lot of their posts come up to the top of your feed. Ah, right. Yeah, but I follow every. Or, that's... Yeah. I'm so confused. Do you? How many people do you follow now? Only like three hundred. Me or Emma? Oh, anyone. It's just this is a question that then I'll I'll tell you what you should do. And I'm about. Be quite... I'm about a th just over a thousand. I'm three hundred twenty-eight. Two oh nine. Two and I. That was down there. Okay, so <laughs> on your stories. Oh, he's snobby with his followers. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like, we're followed by it, Dev. I feel privileged that oh, that's uh, one of them. Very Thanks, selective. Dev, very selective. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you look at the top, do you often get the same stories yeah. like at the top of your page? Yeah. But then I guess I need to ask, it's okay for me and Alex for sure, but with you guys, like, do you have a lot of stories at the top? How many do you have at the top at one time? Uh, what like, do you mean? Maybe the stories, 50. the circles oh, at the top. Oh, okay. Oh, there's loads. Oh, I got heaps. I got heaps. I, only have, I see the same people because I only... Okay, yeah. So what I'm saying is, if you want, like, and I don't like seeing the same stories all the time because the whole point I made this new Instagram account I have is just to sort of, like, see lots of new people kind of thing. Yeah. That was the, sort of the idea. So if you go on your story, like normally you always click on the one on the far left, but if you just scroll all the way to the like the end on the right, yeah. yeah, and then from now on only watch the ones at the end, it will just start mixing it all up, and then you won't get oh, the same wow. people at the front anymore. Because when you watch the one at the end, next time they'll go to the front, and it's just kind of like a conveyor belt of. Oh, just rotates. Um, it's like a sushi train. It, so I actually never watch the, the stories. Like a sushi train. Really, they talk about the algorithms being this thing to be able to one minute warning. Um, mm -hmm. I'll just say this then. The algorithms, and I guess this hits how influencers work as well, that they do it and say it's premised to give you content you want. But it's not. It's forced to give you content repeatedly. Because like the stories, yeah. if you click on one to watch it and now it becomes the one that's always there, that's the one you're naturally going to keep watching. Right. So you you keep getting for it, like reinforces this is what you're going to look okay. at rather than you okay. suggesting Okay, so I've got a question you for you. On Instagram, for your discovery, I seem to get the yep. same things on the discovery. What do you always get? Um, always uh, get the Daily Show. So I get um, Noah Tre Trevor Noah. Noah Trevor. And I always get boxing stuff. And... What's for your discovery? I think I'm the least social media savvy. Because I'm not... Like, on, the, on, on my feed, I only, I only double tap the people that I know. And then most of the time I'm in Discovery. Where's Discovery? It's like at the bottom, the second one. The, the, the magnifying search. glass. Oh, yeah. is that is that got the, the same algorithm? Glass. Is that because so I keep yes, Discovery that, will populate things you that you, yeah, it'll, it'll but it won't pop. It doesn't populate off your feed. It populates on what you go on on Discovery. So like my Discovery yeah. is a lot of basketball, but I don't right. really have basketball on my feed. I never right now, ever Discovery, go on I like Discovery. Playoff stuff. Yeah. But the cool thing that Instagram's done is at the top, you can now see that you can choose um, a category. Like, like I can yeah. go to DIY, gaming, dance. So if you do want to like Change it up. pop out of uh, oh, what your normal okay. thing. But the thing is, uh, Alex made quite a good point is it's not necessarily the things you want to see, but they will show you things which you clicked you, on the uh, most. Yeah, which you engage with more, which doesn't mean you like it more. It's just that they're easy things to watch. So it's just... It just plays into the fact that if, yeah. if, for example, when I watch someone doing tricks in football, which often, like if I see someone playing football, I can't help but just like watch the video. It doesn't mean I want to see it, but then I watch it and they give me another one, another one, another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every time I go to Instagram now, they keep throwing videos yeah. at me. I can't help but like, oh, I just want to watch it one more time, you know? So I've it's got a trigger. Like, they the look for you triggers Instagram pretty much. Was, wasn't for that. Yeah, it's like, a, I don't know how, it's like, obviously their intentions are potentially all good, but just the way it naturally works is that you just end up getting hooked on like, in the same is way that they eat chocolate, they keep putting chocolate in front of you. Like, no, I don't want to eat more chocolate. But I keep eating the chocolate. They're like, well, we saw you ate chocolate last time, so have some more chocolate. And you're like, ah, oh, I don't want it. Well, I've got that big see my love lion and tiger cross. Have you guys seen yeah, that? Yeah, I've seen that. Liger. Yeah, got you. 
But um, if there's right. no likes, if there's no likes shown on underneath the photos or the views or anything, are people more are people less likely to double tap because it doesn't show up? No, I don't double I don't tap when I. S- in fact, if anything, to be honest, I'm less likely to double tap when there's thousands of likes. Oh, why? Because a lot of my li- like when I do things with social media engagement, a lot of it's to do with like support. And like, if you got like ten thousand likes, like you don't need my support. But if you're like my friend, like you need my support. If I ever get ten thousand likes and I don't see you like me, I'll be like, that's the one person. I'll be like, Alexander, (laughs) you haven't liked the photo. You haven't liked the photo. (laughs) (laughs) Like it now. (laughs) Saying that, Dev did say mid conversation. Yeah, I only I only like things that. uh, What was it you said? I only like like my friends' posts. I don't remember the last time I got like from Dev. So (laughs) this week. Ooh. I'm Maxi and you. <gasps> I'm pretty sure I like. Oh, likes now. I'm, pre- you, I'm pretty sure I like. Of, I like fans, all of Dev, Alexander's bloody post. <laughs> Every time I'm on there, anyway. Yeah, that's the thing. You're not on there very often. No, gather, anyway. there, my, I was just there. looking at my. I don't know if it was you, Zans, but my Facebook profile has been the same since I graduated. All right, Maxi, let's do your article next. Okay, so I wanted to talk about, and I think it classed as B-side news, but you guys might have already heard about it, and it's been in and out of the press a lot. Um, And it's basically about a woman called Casta Semenya, uh, who is a female athlete with high testosterone levels. Yeah. Um, And essentially, she is... A very good for between the distance of 400 meters to 1500 meters yeah. um she's like she hasn't actually got the world record yet that was a czech woman from back in the 90s but she's like just destroying the field of the people she's winning at the moment and then basically someone i think it was in 2008 i could be wrong on this 2008 or two around those so nearly 10 years ago someone called out saying like she's too manly to be in women's women's sport like she got too much testosterone so they tested her and they found out yeah she's a woman or everything she hasn't like changed genders um but she has got like yeah. an abnormally high level of testosterone um so basically recently the iaaf like the people that run athletics the governing body and decide who's allowed to compete and stuff said she's only allowed to compete in the next like championships if she takes pills to reduce her testosterone what that's their verdict what and she was like refusing to do it, of course. Yeah. But what? there's just like so much that goes around this and we can take it in so many directions. But like just the idea that someone said to someone like you have, um, you're too manly to run in a woman's race when they're yeah. actually a woman. To so me, it's just like the audacity t- to do that is. Well, she has belief. DSD, which is, um, it's either known as differences of sex development or, um, or. Yeah disorder of sex development or something like that so it actually kind of means that she has usually people with with that disorder have male and female genetics um i was gonna say is she hermaphrodite mm, no no, it's it's not not that no No. it's that she's got like something like an x like um i don't know that it's like an xy something chromosome whatever or something yeah so basic xxr or something like that or something like that i don't know but basically um okay so people with dsd their hormones genes reproductive organs may be a mix of male and female characteristics the term disorders um is controversial with some of those affected preferring the term intersex by the way um but they Usually, I they could be a hermaphrodite. It says they usually stay the gender that they were assigned as a baby, okay? Um, or they might change their gender as they grow up and they sort of, I don't know, feel that they're more like one way than the other. Um, but, yeah, this lady, the IAFF or whatever, IAAF, which is the International Association of Athletics Federations, has dismissed her appeal. Um and there's been so much backlash, it's crazy because it doesn't yeah. make sense as to why they've done it. And it only seems to be for this specific case. But the people are saying this is a biological thing. It's a natural occurring thing. Um, so where do you draw the line? 
Like if you're going to say... Yeah, go. So I'm probably going to have a controversial opinion. Mm -hmm. Good. (laughs) I don't. I completely agree with you all. I, I understand why they've made the ruling they've made though. And the reason I say that is because the IAAF's, their, uh, what's the word, like their clients are the athletes, not the fans. As much yeah. as the fans make, like bring in the money and stuff. But if you, if they allowed her to compete knowing this, they're going to get a lot more backlash from the athletes who are competing against her which is more important to them than it is the backlash from the fans and the media. But the thing is, it's biological. So um, so one of the scientists on on something said, with women, their hormone levels go, their testosterone and all different hormone levels rise and fall throughout their entire life, right? So that no one else is being tested where they might be at a peak or might be at a lull. Like, that's the thing. You can't really... (laughs) I thought you said lull. (laughs) <laughs> lull at a lull and also something to do with the um actual testing the IAAF have themselves said they can't be 100% sure that they will then take this with uh, like with the 1500 meters like you said Maxi they're not yeah. going to give this same outcome to that because their testing isn't conclusive so it's just like they've said and they themselves said that it's it is discriminatory they know that but it's essential is what they've said so it's just, it's a Paula weird Paula Radcliffe. One. Do you know Paula Radcliffe? The yeah. The marathon runner? She said, um, she thinks that if the verdict falls in her favour, Semenya's favour, it will um, basically open up a world that transgenders can then run in women's sports and it will ruin the women's sport industry. No, because... Completely. No, they've said yeah. that if they had agreed to That's... this, if they had agreed to the appeal, what would happen is it's been suggested that they would actually introduce an open category. So men and women could, in theory, compete side by side um, and be protective against any sort of gender in that open category. Well, That's what uh, could but then potentially that means have just happened. just men then dominate that category, no? Like, yeah, I was going to say, who men, would compete Do men in drop that? into that category? Like, if you're competing at world level and you say Bolt keeps beating you, you go, okay, I'm going to go jump into that open category yeah is it, is i don't know what anyone, the criteria is it for, i don't know what the, the thing criteria for me is like what be. i don't get is she's only, the only thing they want to change of her is testosterone levels like nothing that's if you just change your testosterone levels, we're going to call you a female like, like that's enough but then when like michael felt for instance he mm. was in a study they found that he produced less than half the lactic acid that his fellow competitors had which is like unbelievable but because he's a man, there's no limit above him. It's like, you're just a freak. Congratulations for having amazing genetics. If right. you have a woman yeah. which has genetics skewed in one direction, yeah. oh, you're too close to the men's sport. You're not yeah. allowed to compete. Like, to me, that's just, that. that's, that's really bad. Maybe we should lay, Michael Phelps should now swim against sharks. Like, what's, <laughs> what are we saying? Dolph- <laughs> Only dolphins. Only dolphins. Yeah, so there's going to be a dolphin. Like, Michael Phelps has his own category of people that have genetic, like, these the reason like and Alex spoke about it before that the reason the NBA is so amazing and like you look up to it is because they're all genetic freaks like that yeah. happens at the top level of the sports so the idea that it's only allowed to happen in men's for me is just like it's just not right. It's the not thing I that you do have to obviously be careful of is when uh, men transform into women uh, like transgenders. I think that potentially could be a different ca- category and then there's a load of issues around that obviously but. For someone that was born a woman that has different genetics to other women, there's a lot of men born like men that have much different genetics to other men. Yeah, 100%. Also, if she takes this medication, apparently it could um, it could reduce... So a leading sports scientist said she would be five to seven seconds slower over the 800 metres if she does take this medication to reduce her testosterone. Why don't they just say, can you just run slower? Like... <laughs> Can you just like win by a little bit make, less? Put her like, back, like, give everyone else a head start. Did um, I, I don't know if this is going to enter the podcast, but did um, Serena Williams have this problem? No. And this is a this is a whole different issue, and I, maybe like it might not be the right way to put it, but for me, because this woman's from Africa, there's a Czech woman who had could potentially have the same um, same uh, genetic sort of makeup. Yeah. And she ran it back in the nineties and broke all the records. No one said a thing. This woman's from Africa. My theory is, and it's just a theory and you're welcome to, <laughs> if if tennis was like NFL where it was only played in America, they might have flagged this up. But because tennis is like an international sport and Serena, women, Serena Williams plays against 
people all around the world, the yeah. Americans are like, this is our uh, person. Right. So we're not going to question her. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. right. But of course, if you look at Serena Williams compared to other female tennis players, she's not genetically the same. And that's why mm. she's so, that is why she's so good. She serves nearly as fast as some of the men. Like no other woman does that. But because like she comes from a place where she's on the right side of this sort of bias. Of the power. No one's ever going to question her. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I just, it's a tricky one, but I don't think it was the right decision. But it, it, it's, it's tricky, but it's not like she's gone see- and done something to her, her, to her body to make herself, to give herself she an advantage. She hasn't taken any drugs, has she? One minute no. warning. She's literally just been born that way. So I don't know. I, I, I personally don't even think it's tricky. Like as Maxie said, she's a woman. Like exactly. she can just be more genetically gifted and she hasn't even broken the world record. How are um, you banning someone who's not even the fastest ever? Yeah, <laughs> no, true. She's a two-time Olympic. Didn't she? Has she had her medal taken away from her? Not yet. She's a two-time Olympic not yet. 800 so they meter will take, champion. They will take the medal away from no, her. No, I don't think it's like, uh, it's, I think they, they haven't said yes or no yet, but it's, okay. it, it doesn't seem like they will. But okay. uh, there's yeah. people saying that if they, they still bring in that topic up, like if they do decide that, it will be like a... Uh, like disaster for the sport yeah. basically. Yeah. I just feel sorry for her. And and the the decision was like a two to one decision. So it's like one person's like, no, and the other's like, nah. We will keep our <laughs> Olympics how it is. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, have you, seen no. It? Yeah. <laughs> you know you know, um just before I finish, you know uh the Paralympics and uh the Paralympics, how they try to even up the field so that disabilities yeah. Uh, how do they, do you know how they do that with the running and stuff? Because like there was, um, who's uh, Oscar Pistorius with his blades, right? Yeah. 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 Does he go up against uh, people with one leg? And a, like, is, yeah. Yeah. They they categorize, I don't know, I, can't, I don't know how they, what the categories are, but they're like T's and like they, they put them in yeah. certain categories okay. that they say, they deem this yeah. is the same amount of, disablement for this particular activity right right okay it almost like the boxing uh weights weight categories yeah. we, oh, we yeah. think if these two go against each other it's fair ish you know mm-hmm. but then like oscar but with in oscar pistorius's one i think what they do is they sort of measure how much you exp- how much force you know like they have those springy yeah yeah uh, legs at the end yeah. they sort of measure how much force comes out of them and tries to make it equivalent to what you would expect from a normal leg Oh, okay. Oh. So when Oscar Pistorius runs, like there was controversial in one of his runs that he was using, they were too springy. So he was oh. just basically like jumping. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Oh, wow. I want to get a pair of those. You know, like the ones that you can get. Like an, uh, yeah. I, I want to get a pair. They look so fun. They do kind of look fun. I, I could just imagine. No, like, there's I like ones. Why there are ones. More people don't use them. There are ones um, that you can get. They make you, you're like above the ground, Emma. Like you're like a few feet above the ground. Oh. Um, and yeah. you can like run it, like bound run in them. Like they're made oh. for like performance. Oh, wow. Yeah. Imagine people start using them to go to work. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like the, the, it's environmentally friendly, right? I can get the bus or I can just spring to work and <laughs> stay healthy. And I was just saying, you'll be, the only problem is I'll be sat here on my balcony and then I'll just have people popping like up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Their head just comes up. It's like, hello. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. Okay, let's do my article next. So this one I've titled Rat on Man. Okay, so picture this. You just sat on a subway train or any train or bus or wherever and... You see someone opposite you sleeping, right? And you're like, oh, they're having a nice old snooze. That's fine. And then next minute, you see a massive rat crawling on them. Scenario one, do you just take out your phone and video? Or do you actually go, hey, there's a rat on you. Wake up. Is it his rat? And this actually happened, by the way. It was it his rat? This was not his rat. This was a subway rat. (laughs) Is it a big rat? <laughs> it was huge. There's a video of it. <laughs> how how huge is huge? Is it bigger than my hand? It's pretty big. Yeah, I think it's bigger than your hand. 
It's pretty big. So this guy this is, was asleep and yeah. then this rat crawled on him and someone literally just videoed it and didn't tell him. And he woke up and the poor man started screaming in horror because it was a rat on him. And it was like up here. It was like his arm was crossed when he was sleeping and it was like crawling up here. So That's my thing rat. is, what has the world come to? Okay, wh- this is where I was going with this. Rats are not scared. Of, uh, rats are different animal. They're not scared. They'll do what they it takes to survive. Scared. They'll do what it takes to survive. They when are I, when you see rats um, scaring cats in videos, <laughs> they're not scared. They're like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> this, is, this is what I was I thinking. I learned from the best. Splinter. <laughs> Splinter. <laughs> Splinter. <laughs> okay, so my thing is not so much on the rat, but on the fact that we just take our cameras out and start videoing everything. Yeah. That was, that was, that was more the point. Like, when do you, like, when do you intervene and actually be human? And well, you'd be help. human all the time. Hope you, you'd, you'd want to think that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You'd think. I guess you just yeah. have to weigh up how how many likes will, or views would I get on this video, <laughs> and how how upset will this man be if I don't help? <laughs> I was I, I had I was, a, I was interested in this, and I I actually read up, and I wanted to see what the law was, and it says like. This is in Australia, but I think it's the same everywhere because I, I looked a little bit into America as well and it said that it isn't unlawful to to actually just video an emergency. Like unless the only the only time that it will become an issue is if you have a relationship with the person that is like injured, this isn't an emergency, or you're looking after that person or you have caused the injury. Any other time in a public space, you can just video. Like no now, issues. That's I don't... I don't remember where this was. I want to say it was in the States. There, there was, this is a, a bit morbid, but to go against what you were just saying, yeah. there was a case where some kids were at a lake and they saw a guy on the other side walking into the lake and they took out their phones and videoed it and he was committing suicide. He walked into the lake until he was underwater and drowned himself. They got prosecuted. What? For not For not doing something about it because it ended up being a harmful thing um so that's i guess a different side yeah, of it yeah so maybe in america it's different or unless all the states have their different sort of regular like laws the only time it also said that it's an issue is if you actually get in the way of emergency crews trying to save someone or help yeah. someone but it said that pretty much public spaces you are not obliged to help out someone in an emergency like you there's no lawful obligation but maybe i don't know where that was exactly like which state or whatever i can't remember, I can't remember. just, just but so i think it's, it's it's kind of a new thing though isn't it so it's kind of hard i guess legislation's not necessarily in place everywhere for something yeah like this. that's true just, just to put it like point. when you said um people take out their phone and like when when you have um companies or like world star i'm trying to get like world star and tmz like they're, world they're willing star. to pay you um, pay you for your video if you oh, see something. Oh, is that interesting. why they're doing it? Oh no, I don't know what they're doing. They're just trying to get likes and trying to get notoriety, rarity, rarity. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, as long as there's people out there willing to look at this and see, like, I don't see as long f- as the demand's there. Yeah, right. I don't see it funny. I don't videos that I see people get hurt. I don't see it as funny. No. Right, but there's people that that want to see this stuff. Like on Reddit, do you know Reddit? Yeah. Reddit yeah. has all different categories of really like morbid stuff. Like they have um, people getting hit by cars. What? Right? And there's no. a whole there's a whole trend. Like there's a whole um, feed where there's this whole thing where video and you see this person just getting smacked by a car. Because people want to see it. Oh, no. Um, so I, Dev, I'm not sure about, I, I'm I 100% sure they had something like this in Australia, but Max, and Emma, you'll be able to relate to this. I think we think this is an internet thing, but it's pre-internet. You ever it's remember pre, you've yeah. been framed? Oh, yeah. yeah. They would literally pay you £250 to send in videos of people getting hurt. Yeah, they have it and here. And it was a, t- it was a TV it's show. Yeah. Not seriously hurt, though, very often. Yeah. No, but it, it's the same premise that people want yeah. to see bad things happen to other people for funny. They just they like just for, put funny music over the top, like. Yeah. <laughs> you reckon it makes I mean, people feel better? 
Oh. No, I kind of, I don't, I've never, I always cringe. I'm that one that's like, no, I can't see. I can't see. I don't want to watch it. Cause, so there was one in the same capacity of people doing things and not really knowing. There was one that was on Twitter just yesterday um, where it, oh, I knew this was going to happen. Where a guy, he's uh, a snake performer and he wrapped this, uh, was it, uh, it was a constrictor. And he was like, it was like a little circus set. And he wrapped the constrictor around his neck twice. What? Why? And then the constrictor did what a constrictor does and constricted him. And he felt like he was down on the ground and he's like twitching. But you can't tell if it's a performance or not. It wasn't. The mm. constrictor killed him. But it took people a while to go and intervene. Um, so it's just like that case of... And like what? this is viral on the internet now. Oh, but the, like, imagine God. if you said to someone, "Oh yeah, you like you can go on the internet, you just watch someone die, and it'll be like famous video on Twitter." Like it's such a weird mindset yeah. that you have to be in, like that we are in as a society that these things are acceptable. Do you reckon it, they saw it as uh, acceptable, or do you think um, they're just desensitized, or they just weren't sure what we don't know what's real or augmented reality or virtual reality anymore? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I think it, when you say like. It's, there's obviously a uh, it's really weird because it is do you find it funny to watch someone fall over for instance no i don't <laughs> I, I i can't like, i can't categorically say no sometimes it is I, i'm not gonna yeah lie. like i i don't like i don't really Max like, is watching like people yeah get hurt. i like those videos <laughs> <laughs> no but i don't like necessarily i don't like watching people get hurt seriously but when someone does get hurt and falls over i can't explain why but i i find it funny like <laughs> We, I can give you, we were in no, Tesco's once, so like that. a big supermarket, and my friend, he's like 110 kg, big rugby player, like six foot three or 190 something centimeters, I don't know. And he's like walking through, pushing this trolley, and he like, in some sort of jokingly fashion, decided to like lift his legs up and just like put his weight on the trolley <laughs> oh, and no. like slide. Oh, no. And he goes like, we and then like he says we as it's like to mess around and then the trolley just like flies forward and for unbeknownst to me or him actually he just doesn't want to let go of the trolley so the trolley like <laughs> slams into the floor with his arms and his he just kind of collapsed like a deck chair like in less than a second in front of like a lot of people and that was hilarious okay. like and and he's a big rugby player, so he's used to doing this kind of thing. But the fact he did it in front of all these people and it was just like, he must have thought it was a good, funny idea in his head. It just made it Okay, like, if, it, if they're funny. done something and it's not like hurt them at all, it could be funny. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but if there's... <laughs> but... Your tone's changed. <laughs> if someone gets hurt, I can't... If like, like they're actually hurt and they're like crying or they're in pain, I'm, I'm like... I'm like, <gasps> I don't oh understand God. the nut shots. I don't like when there's a compilation yeah. of people yeah. just falling and they're getting hit in the balls. And I'm like, man, why? Like, did a male, did a female make this comp? Like, was this a female editor? <laughs> one minute, one in. Did she just, <laughs> did she have, did she break up with a, with a boyfriend? And she's like, I hate men. And oh she just wanted to, God. cause it is the first thing, my balls go straight to my throat. It's just like, <laughs> oh, that's it. And I'm like, I just walk out of the room. It's really, it, it's horrible. It's a horrible <laughs> feeling. Think it, All right, I I've think got... it must have started when you were like a kid, when it didn't actually hurt, but you pretended it hurt, and then it was a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Maxie, explain. Explain. <laughs> if you like, when I was like, I know, I know exactly what you mean, Maxie. Six or seven years old, a football would come at me, and it would hit me in that area enough for me to go, oh, <laughs> and then everyone's like, oh, and we're like, oh. We don't, it doesn't hurt. It's just. I wasn't developed enough for it to hurt at that age, but you just do it anyway. And then, <laughs> then now apparently it's still funny today. But like you said, you you you're trained to think it's funny, but your inner body's like, oh, oh like that, that is not ugh. okay. Devil's Round robin squeamish. question for the team: Man, subway asleep, rat on him. What do you do? Phone or intervene? Intervene. Maxi. Intervene. I think all day. Yeah. Dev. I'm screaming. I'm like not touching the rat. I'm just going, yo. Wake up! Dev's gone. Dev's down there in the other in the other carriage. Yo, I'm chucking my hat, my my shoe at him, waking him up. I'm not going near the rat because the rat might like you know. <laughs> Emma, uh, Emma, you said intervene, right? Yeah, I'm not scared of rats. No, okay. you're not. You're not. So unless it came now, on round me. robin, quick one. What do you think you would actually do in reality? 
legitimately <laughs> intervene. But I would be freaking I'd, out. I definitely, I definitely want to get my phone out. Like, no way I'd get my no phone way. out. The only thing is, is like, if the rat was on his leg and looked like it was going to get off, maybe I'd just be like, Ugh. like, do I wake him up? That's the bit. That's I guess the bit where you're like, ah. But I, getting your phone out is, I think, yeah, is, in that situation, I don't think that's the norm. I think that's, that's weird. Yeah. I have I have another question similar right but it's like you see someone else's kid in a in a shopping center right and he's about to do something silly and get or like hurt. push push something push something over do you grab the kid or do you tell the parent to grab the kid I like the, the parent, parent the parents within the earshot earshot but it's about to happen what do you do I do not careful. touch another person's kid without. I their think permission. it's easier for a woman to touch the person's kid. That sounds weird. <laughs> that I sounds think horrible. it's easier for the woman to intervene in that situation <laughs> as like a mum. Like it's like you're protecting them, and people are going to think less weirdly of it. Yeah. If it's a man, I don't know. It's, but if it was my kids and someone was prote- helping my kid that was just about to get hurt, I wouldn't care. But if you saw a so, man grabbing you your what? kid, what are you thinking? Hey, that's my kid. That's right. That's what I'm saying. I'll t- I tell you what. I was in a similar situation, actually, Dev. I was leaving Tesco and like there's a bit of a run up between the entrance and the road. Yeah. And I was nearer the road and this kid was like full steam going towards the road and there were loads of cars going by and the dad was behind him. So I sort of just played like defense to the kid. Yeah. But I didn't touch him. <laughs> and then the dad came like came and got him. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, it's I like think that if game. You're an... It's like that game with the ball, and you've got it. You know, you can't get it. Let it get out. <laughs> Alexander, he did, the baby just went through your legs. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think if it's a man with a kid, and a, you're a man, you can probably intervene more than if it's a mother with her child and you're a man. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, also, mother like, with I high the, testosterone. <laughs> 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 Hey everyone, thanks for listening today. If you're listening to the podcast on Spotify or iTunes, make sure you rate and review. If you want to, drop us some comments. If you're watching on video, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a like and leave us some comments on your thoughts on any of the articles today. And follow us on Instagram at the B-Side Word and check us out on Facebook too. What he said. Catch you on the next one. Ciao. Ciao.